I think uh, we, we have much more knowledge than we had 10, 15 years ago. So we know a lot, but there are still some confounding or confusing factors. So we need scales, etc. But also the, the data is somewhat heterogeneous. So the, the challenge is how to make uh, scales that are based on very reliable sources, so to say, because we combine data from uh, some studies that are not meant to be that way. In the future, I strongly believe that with some new potent drugs, pharmaceutical therapy, we can strengthen the Anderson wall without, being able, without the need of uh, any uh, extensive procedures, in the endovascular or microsurgical. So I think that's going to happen after some decades. It's, we still need to work. Yeah, it depends on the size of the aneurysm. Very small aneurysms are very thin. The wall is like 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters. Imaging is very difficult. But if you have a larger aneurysm, giant aneurysm, you even may see some small blood vessels around it. So you can easily say that this aneurysm is dangerous. And according to the new data and old data, they certainly are. What is the challenge is uh, very thin walled aneurysms. That's the future with higher Teslas. I'm sure that we will be able to detect which really are rupture prone, regardless of the size. I started to think about the scales and different studies because uh, we need to get some answers still. And we, think, we have to think about what is uh, the essence of these studies so that we don't, based on one study, change everything. We have to be critical and because these patients are critically ill and if we treat or not treat may, may affect the rest of their lives. So we have to be really critical not to hurt the patients by over treating, let's say, un untreated aneurysms, but not under treating so that they bleed. So this is uh, a balance that needs to be defined still.